Hey guys, Chicky Domain, Debut.com with a Debut.com surf forecast update. This forecast update effective around 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, May 18th, 2017. And sorry for the delay in updates, guys. There has been some changes in the forecast. want to start you off with a recap going back to our last video update. Now, we know you guys hate to hear the word possible because it leaves the door open, but we have to use it because in forecast, the forecast does, can, and always changes. I want to start you back on May 11th. In our last video update, we talked about a possible major swell event. wanted to show you what model, you know, what the difference is between models and how it develops in real time. In that video update, we also talked about a uh, Caribbean suck-up low. Uh, we are now in that real-time phase. Uh, models were hinting back on May 11th. This image, by the way, is back on May 11th. Uh, back then, we're hinting at a Caribbean suck-up low coming out of the Caribbean. And this was the GFS that was run on May 11th, seven days ago. And that's when we posted our video update. And this was valid for May 23rd. So this is still five days away from that run back on May 11th. But this is clear sign that the model was picking up on something. But uh, this was the 12Z GFS. May 11th for May 23rd, showing Tropical Storm Brett along the Florida coast in here. Now, we'll switch you back over to this uh, imagery from May 11th, and we'll advance it for you on that possible major swell event and how that did not unfold for everyone. Although there was northeast ground swell in the water, the majority of it came in here towards the islands and then missed out in here um, as some strong west-southwest flow developed off the system that we thought would give a possible or a major swell event. So here it is, May 11th, there was an area of low pressure up here towards the southern tip of Greenland that started off the uh, northeast ground swell and then we had another developing gale in here and then another one coming up from behind we'll advance that for you and you'll see that this gale then developed in here just southeast of nova scotia so this was northeast ground swell in here Northeast ground swell developing in here, and if you saw the swell models, uh, that was the 15 to 18 second swell periods that we're showing. But then we got into negative swell production as we started moving into the 14th as another area of low pressure, a late season nor'easter setting up over New England on the uh, 15th in here. And because of this strong west-southwest flow, this was blowing into that northeast swell that was generated and it knocked the size down for east coast in here. Now, where the possible major swell event came in was models initially were hinting at this gale was going to be out towards in here. And that would have increased northeast fetch on top of pre-existing northeast ground swell. And that never verified. But you can see in this imagery... Now, this is the 15th, so this is three days ago, how this pattern begins to set up a Caribbean suck-up low that was in here. And that's what the model was picking up on here for possible tropical storm Brett. But there were some environmental factors that had changed since then, and that is, one, a large Saharan dust storm developed out here and started to rob the main development region of moisture. And you've got to have moisture with the, the flow here coming from the east to the west. You've got to have support of moisture in here for something to get going. If there's no moisture, there's no convection. But we'll advance this for you here. Uh, and you can see that the front begins to die out. That area of low pressure moved up in here towards Newfoundland. And you can see how the rule of thumb is... We always watch tail ends of fronts or along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. The front has now pinched off out here east of the Bahamas, and the model was showing a lift up over the islands in here, but now recent trends keep it pinned up, up underneath here under, under Cuba. And the reason why, and they have since backed off tropical development, 
of a name system. And there are several reasons why what happens is, is if an area of low pressure gets stuck down in here, you start to work into different factors. Uh, land interaction, the high mountainous terrain can interrupt flow, but most importantly in this situation, easterly trade winds can develop in here, south of Puerto Rico, south of Hispaniola, in between the north coast of South America, and as those easterly trades begin to pick up, they can disrupt anything that's trying to develop down in here towards the surface. So a lot of times uh, you really need a well-organized system that has the chance to lift up north over into the islands to start to produce any real swell. And so because this system looks to be trapped down in here south of the islands, there's really not going to be a strong east-southeast fetch develop like we saw or thought we were going to see uh, coming up in the forecast. We'll switch over to some real time now. And again, here is this area that we've been monitoring for the last several days. And because models have been flip-flopping, it's caused us to back off doing any type of forecast call. But again, you can see how this pattern likes to develop a Caribbean suck-up low. Now, climatology, when we get something that develops in here, there's only two ways for it to go either up in here towards the Gulf of Mexico or out to sea in a natural progression or like the model was showing, moving up in here towards the Bahamas and then up in here towards the Mid-Atlantic. Now, ironically, uh, 2015, uh, we had an early seasonal development with Tropical Storm Ana, and this is basically how Ana developed. We had an approaching front that came and it sucked up an area of low pressure in here towards the Florida coast, and then we got tropical development in here. It does not look like that's going to happen this time. Models have backed off, but we'll continue to monitor this area until its demise, but it looks like it's going to get sucked up towards this front right here, and it's going to suck up into the, uh, or the energy is going to suck up into the front with non-tropical development. Now, We'll put this into motion for you. This is the uh, GOES, uh, new GOES-16 satellite imagery, and you can see it's pretty much a, 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 a bunch of mess in here. You can see that the, the front in here is trying to drag this section out this way. High pressure is trying to push this back this way, and you have the, the little bit of spin that's left in the atmosphere just under here towards central Cuba. So it's a little bit further uh, towards the west than what the models were anticipating uh, four or five days ago where they thought that the area of spin was going to be up in here and then lift up in here north of Hispaniola, giving it a chance to get up in here uh, towards the Bahamas. We'll switch you over to the latest wind forecast, and this is for today, Thursday, and you can see that strong easterly trade in here. Again, when you get strong easterly trades in here in the eastern Caribbean, it gets a chance to disrupt anything that may be trying to organize down in here at the surface. And then also with this region, other factors begin to work in, such as the high terrain, mountainous terrains of the islands in here, disrupting the flow. And then once convection does start to build, the other factor is upper level winds. Upper level winds are running around 30 to 40 knots. So as convection starts to build up into the atmosphere, by the time it gets to the upper level, the strong upper level winds shares that convection apart and then it does not get a chance to percolate. We'll advance this into Friday for you. And other than some easterly, southeast, southeast flow, all we can expect is some wind swell. Nothing really showing in the upcoming models. Uh, looks like no tropical development going through at least the second or third day of June. We are now uh, uh, 13 days inside of two weeks for the official start of the 2017 Atlantic Tropical Cyclone season. This works you through this weekend now. And again, you're going to see that there's a negative swell production up in here towards the um, uh, mid-Atlantic in here as we progress into Monday as a strong westerly flow begins to develop off the mid-Atlantic. This is going out to Wednesday and then into Thursday. And here's that strong 
offshore component. Summertime is here, guys. Only some east southeast wind swell aimed in here towards this way. That's all we got for you for now. Stay tuned for the next update.